I've been told I look like a Sainsbury's employee in this top, which I didn't actually clock onto until someone's told me, and now I can't unsee it. So, but I do love the top, it's sexy, it's lovely, my protein, link in bio, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, welcome to the video, people. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you a little bit about how I coped mentally during my injury. Now, I've had quite a lot of questions, like more than I expected, actually, about my injury. Um, and how I basically coped because I wasn't able to go to the gym for six months and that's a long long time when you used to go in every single day and my first tip is going to be to find something else that you find enjoyment in happiness in something else that makes you feel good now for most people well for everyone that is exercise exercise makes you feel good no one can deny that yeah in the moment you may not like it you may not enjoy it depending on what type of exercise that is, but you can't you can't say that after those endorphins that you feel don't make you feel good. So I would say find another either sport or form of cardio or something like that which you will enjoy. Now I considered going running, starting running, watching like Louis Armstrong on YouTube, seeing him go running. Uh, that made me want to start running. I didn't actually ever do it because to be honest, where I live isn't the most scenic place, so to go for a run around here in Stoke-on-Trent, it wouldn't be the best, and I live right close, like next to a motorway, um, so it wouldn't be the most scenic view whilst running. But instead, I started playing football with my mates again. I started playing seven-a-side every Wednesday. Um, now, initially, I was very unfit, very unfit, but now, Maury Rushton, top scorer in the league, Bags every game, you know what I mean? Maury rushed and that's an inside joke. None of you are probably going to get it except from one person. So yeah, if you are struck with an injury yourself, my first tip would be just to find another sport or another form of exercise which you enjoy. You can go running, you can go just for walks, to be honest, just go on more walks. Um, I don't know, anything, anything that you enjoy. If you're someone who's got maybe like a leg injury or a hip injury, maybe swimming, would be a lot better because obviously the water is going to take a lot of pressure off your joints um, so maybe try that out anyway it's time to go to the gym we're going to go for a big pull session I'm going to sip on my pre-workout here we've got a supplement needs pump with clean kill so I'm going to focus and I'm going to pump it's going to be naughty I'm going to do my shoulder exercises and then I'll see you after the gym for tip number dos Right, we have returned from the gymnasium. Very good session, very good session indeed. Although I was a little bit annoyed with my shoulder. My shoulder was playing up a little bit. Didn't do my shoulder exercises before I went because I woke up this morning, it feels okay. And that's another thing that you need to understand when you've got an injury and you're recovering from an injury is like it won't be just a straight path. Like you won't just go from, okay, I'm injured. And then one day it's just like, oh, it's magically healed. I can just go back to normal again. It will be like up and down, up and down. Some days I have good days where my shoulder feels strong, it feels good. And then other days it just feels dead clicky and I get pain and it's just annoying. Today I feel like it was one of those days, but when I got back, I just did my shoulder exercises and it feels great again. It feels nice and stable. So that is actually tip number two is to basically just understand that it's not a straight journey, just straight back to full recovery. It doesn't happen like that. You'll you'll have peaks, you'll have troughs where some days it'll hurt, some days it'll won't. Um, but on the days where it does hurt, you've got to understand that you need to do exercises, you need to do you need to basically do everything in your power that you can possibly do to make sure that you give yourself the best chance of it healing as fast as possible. Whether that's pay for physio, physio for myself I just saw it as an investment, you know, my business, everything is geared around the gym. So it would make sense for me to invest in my own body, invest in myself and make sure that I get my shoulder back to 100% again, because even with the physio, it's took six months. So just imagine if I just left it and tried to 
basically fix it on my own, it would have been, pff, it might not have ever been fixed, to be honest. So I'm gonna get on and do some work now, do some client check-ins, and then later on I will let you know my third and final tip. Now this is probably the most important one. This is probably the one that's helped me the most, so stick around for it. We only get one night. Tip number three, mate. Right, this one is probably the one which I think has helped me the most, definitely. Um, and it's this. It's a journal. Now, I was made aware of this by Mr. Thomas Moore, TM Cycles, in one of his videos a while ago. And I didn't think, personally, that I sort of needed it. Like, I've not, I'm not someone who has really struggled, like I'm lucky to say that, in the fact that I'm not really someone who struggled with like mental health issues, so anxiety, depression. I think I've suffered with anxiety in terms of like situational anxiety. So for example, like talking to a girl or going to meet people for the first time, that kind of thing. I feel like that's more situational anxiety rather than like a constant sense of anxiety. I haven't really suffered with that myself. I'm lucky to say that, but this, helped me massively when I was going through tough periods in terms of recovering from my injury. Um, when you go from doing something that you love every day to doing it once a week and you're not actually enjoying that session, it can become hard. Now this allows you to sort of get all, just pour all of your fucking feelings out onto a page. Now, I'm someone who lives alone. I'll go see my parents, my family and stuff once or twice a week, um, my friends, see now and again i'll i've stopped going out as much that's one of being being one of my new year's resolutions for this year is not to go out as much try and save and invest a bit more money this year so i do feel a little bit more isolated with me especially living on my own but i feel like this has become my friend that i talk to i write down my feelings how i'm feeling my goals and i feel like it sort of it grounds me it's sort of like Right in this, I feel a lot better after, and it aligns me with my goals and reminds me, okay, what is it you need to fucking do? Get it done. Um, so I'll just show you. Right, there we go. So we've got how you feel. You write how you feel, your intentions slash achievements. And then here we've got, what have we got? Things you're grateful for, and then your happy hour. So even though you're someone, even a busy person, someone who's busy 24 seven constantly, has a family, has a business, whatever going on, you should still set aside time for yourself every day, whether that's just one hour, half an hour, whatever it is, you should always set time aside to relax and to unwind, it's very important, else you'll just burn out. And then there's different activities basically for each day. Now this next one that's coming up is, there we go, I'll show you called the relationship map. Can you see it? Yeah. So it says, think about all the people in your life and plot them on the map below. Put the most important person in the middle and work towards the outer ring. That's gonna be a tough one, actually. See what I mean? It really makes you think about your life in ways that you wouldn't previously think about them. So yeah, this, this helps massively. Um, it is a little bit expensive, 35 pound. I got my mum, well, I asked my mum to get it me for Christmas, and she did. Um, so, yeah, I think this has helped massively. And if you're someone who struggles already, even if you don't struggle, I think it can just be a beneficial tool to ensure that you don't, at any point, struggle, or to help you, prevent you from struggling. Um, and just get more in touch with, like, your feelings and your emotions, that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's my final tip is... Journaling, journaling's helped me massively. So if you are someone who struggled, hopefully these tips have helped you out. That's gonna be all for today's video. I will speak to you soon. Goodbye. Oh yeah, like and subscribe too, please. Nice one.